Hello, everybody, and welcome to Pharma Pass ASCII Preparation Module 1, Chapter 2. In this chapter, we are going to talk about three things, about circle of ASCII, exam setting, and how to efficiently use the material available in the exam. Well, ASCII has 12 or 13 cases, depending if they are going to put pre-test question or not. You will have 10 interactive cases and two non-interactive cases. There is going to be a rest station, and the number of rest stations really depend on the number of participants. It can be every other two stations. Then you are going to have 20 minutes of break. In that break time, you can use washroom, you can eat your snack, whatever you're comfortable, you can take a power nap. That's pretty much it about the number of cases. The most important thing is we are going to talk about circle of OSCE. So after the orientation room, when you hear the buzzes, how they sound and everything, you are being led to a long corridor. If it is in the hospital or it is at the university, regardless, you are going to have different doors in a corridor and uh, you will be standing in front of the doors. And the first step is the door note. So we will start with the door note. As you see in the picture, you will be reading the door note. You will have a notebook at your hand and uh, you will take notes in this notebook. But don't worry, if you forgot to take note, there is a copy of the door note inside the room on the table. You will read the door note for about two minutes, then hear a buzz and enter the station. Seven minute countdown starts when you enter the station. On the door note, you will see some information. On the door note, you will have some information, but they are very general information. Mainly it is about the setting of the exam. You will have a writing like this. You are a pharmacist in a community pharmacy. So you're aware it is a community pharmacy, not a hospital. And a patient comes with a concern. So you know it is not a management case or it is not intercollaboration. It is a patient care. And you will have reference on the door note. And in the reference, you will not get detailed information about what references are provided for you. It is not like uh, you're going to be given uh, ciprofloxacin monograph or urinary tract infection uh, chapter from CTC or anything like that. It is a general product catalog. And also, you're going to have time frame. You're going to take note if, if anything specific or significant is mentioned here, you're going to take note in here. Also, you're going to peel off the barcode. This is the stage when you want to peel off the barcode on the notebook that is provided to you in the orientation room. When you peel off the barcode in here, you make sure that you, you, you won't forget giving it to the assessor. Uh, sometimes it happens, you enter the room and you, you forget to peel off the barcode and it turns into mess because sometimes it is difficult to peel it off and the assessor reminds you and you have this 30 seconds before the patient enters the room and you waste this 30 seconds or even more just by peeling off the barcode and have to peel it off and give it to the assessor. So it is very important to peel it off before you enter the room, have it ready at one finger, at one hand, or uh, on pizza or, or uh, on the corner of your notebook, wherever it is possible. And when you enter the room, you will have it ready to deliver, to submit it to the assessor. This is the first step. The second step is when you enter the room, you give the barcode to the assessor, right? In these 30 seconds before the actor enters the room, there are important things to do. Because you're going to have a table, you will be moving um, behind the table. As I said previously, when you're moving behind the table, it is important to be in standing position until the patient enters. Uh, it is very important to be approachable as a pharmacist. And in real practice, this is the reason they are not putting any chairs to sit on in the pharmacy. So the pharmacists uh, are supposed to be approachable. We will be sitting only when the patient is sitting. We will be standing when the patient is standing. Uh, when we are moving behind the table, there are important things to do. You might have 
uh, any of these, all of these, or none of these on, on the table. But you will definitely have your door note. When you have references, as you see, you, you might have references. In these 30 seconds, try to organize your references because under stress, under stress, when you're trying to decide fast and to see and read the patient card, patient profile, you might not be able to see the references and you might think it is a referenceless case while the reference is at one corner of the table. Believe me, under stress, you will not be able to find it if you did not recognize it before the patient enters the room. So make sure, make sure the references are there and make sure they are not stacked on top of each other. They're separated side by side. They are not on top of each other. You might need two, three references to solve this case and the references are stacked on top of each other and you're having difficult time uh, in recognizing them. And maybe the, the previous candidate put them on top of each other. Maybe the previous candidate put it on, on the corner of that table and you're not able to find it. So please, when you enter the room, organize references, organize the table overall, and make sure you have access to everything on the table before, before the actor or actress enters the room. So starting with the patient card, there, uh, there are some important things to keep in mind because reading the patient profile on its own is a competency. So uh, you will have a patient profile in front of you. There are some stuff that you need to know about the patient profile. It is the patient's name, patient's gender, age, allergies, medical history, and also name of medications. What's the significance of reading patient profile? It really helps in, in terms of communication. So when the patient enters, you can say, hello, Mr. John Hansen. Or uh, instead of asking, can I have your name? When, when you have the patient profile in front of you, it means that this stage has been bypassed by the examiner itself. So you shouldn't ask the patient name. What you will do is, are you Mr. John Hansen, 52 years old? Yes, you don't have time to waste. So he will say yes, and you, you move forward by that. And, when, when, uh, and you have allergies here. When collecting information, medical history, you will say, I see you have peanut allergies. Is there any update on that? Or do you have any other allergies that I, I should be aware of? You're not asking the patient, do you have any allergies? Some patients, some, uh, some actors, even in the case, they might get angry because they're instructed to. You might hear such a, such a sentence. Don't you see that on my profile? It means you should be proficient in profile reading. When you have it in the profile, you don't need to ask it twice. I see you have peanut allergies. Is there any update on that? Or is there any other allergies that I, I should be aware of? Uh, and in terms of medical history, instead of asking, do you have any medical condition? I see you have high blood pressure and sore throat. Is there anything else that I should be aware of? There are some other important points in terms of the medications that a patient can take, like metoprolol in here and oxycodone. Important points are compliance, or the patient is here for early refill. And there's some important therapeutic notes that we have to know. Looking at the patient profile, one of these things can happen based on new prescription. Either the dose is too low on the prescription and the patient comes and says, okay, it's not working for me. We have to educate the patient. For example, the patient thinks the antidepressant dose is low and he has been taking it only for one, two weeks. We have to educate the patient uh, to, uh, that uh, he will see the effect uh, the improvement like in four weeks, in six weeks. This can be an education case. Or the dose is too high, the patient has side effects because of the uh, dose of, for example, one of the statins, and we need to talk to the patient, talk to the doctor uh, to come into solution for that. The adverse effects of current therapy, the patient is taking, for example, ramipril, perindopril, or any ACE inhibitor, and it starts having dry cough, uh, then we have to change it into uh, an ARB, right? Drug not effective. Compliance, as I said before, the patient comes 15 days late, 
20 days late, one month late, and we have to educate the patient on compliance, depending on the type of the medication, if it is for chronic situation, uh, if it is PRN, it is fine usually, but if it is a chronic situation, we have to, to educate the patient on compliance. Drug without indication. For drug without indication, it is a very interesting chapter in minor ailments in CTMA. Search the word deprescribing. For example, the patient is on lorazepam or the patient is on pantoprazole for years now, and the patient does not have any indication to continue the uh, med these medications. So we have to talk to the doctor. Hey, doctor, uh, this patient has been taking pantoprazole for a long time now. He had GERD at the time, but he doesn't have any symptoms. We don't see any necessity to continue this medication. Uh, let's come into a solution and solve this problem. So this is number six, drug without indication, right? That the patient does not have any indication, but there is drug on, on, on his profile. Indication without drug, indication without drug. The patient is over 40 years old. The patient has diabetes. The patient has all the risk factors and uh, patient has high blood pressure, but high blood pressure is controlled. Diabetes is controlled. Everything is great. There is no problem in the profile but one thing is missing, statins, statins. So there is an indication and the patient is eligible to be prescribed a statin and the patient uh, does not have it in the profile. So there is an indication without the drug number seven. Drug, drug interactions, for example, clarithromycin with one of these statins, right? Or, or with warfarin or aspirin with apixaban. Any drug, drug interaction example that you can think of. Food and drug interactions, grapefruit with many medications uh, that are being metabolized by CYP450 and allergies as we saw in the patient profile. So back to the patient profile example in here, metoprolol, uh, it is supposed to be taken once a day in the morning. It is given 30 tablet, but 55 days ago. So the patient comes now, we should ask, why didn't you take it? Why are you 25 days late? And we should go through the algorithm of refilling and to see if it is proper to refill it or the patient needs reassessment by the doctor. Another important thing that I want to concentrate on is OTC cases. If you have OTC medications on the table and the patient really needs a medication, you need to give one of the medications that is on the table. So there might be a reference or there might not be a reference. Uh, and you might have different medications in the reference. The important thing is, if the patient needs a medication, you're supposed to give one of the medications on the table. If the patient is a referral case, just refer. But if the patient needs a medication, just give one of the medications on the table. This is for OTC case only. But uh, let's say if it is non-OTC case and the patient comes for amoxicillin for strep throat and upon asking, you realize the patient also has fever or the patient uh, prompts the question, what can I take for fever? You can briefly educate on Tylenol. For the fever, you can take Tylenol 500 milligrams every four to six hours and not to exceed eight tablets in 24 hours. Just very briefly, even though it is not on the table, you can mention this. This is non-OTC case. Yes, you can uh, mention this. Or, or uh, the, the patient is taking hydrocodone, you can say, yeah, take Senecat. Uh, but these are non-OTC cases. You can briefly touch on one of the medications that is not on the table. But for OTC cases, if the medication is on the table, please recommend one of the medications that is on the table. And the good thing about that is usually the instructions on the label are sufficient and more than enough for instructing the patient. You can keep the, keep the eye contact and read the information that you need from the table that will be pretty sufficient for you. And references, we will do referencing and we will uh, go through reference checking uh, comprehensively on a different chapter. But here pretty much they are all, all things that you, you should know about the table. So on the table, you will have door note, patient card, patient profile, have, have to read patient profile and not to repeat the questions that is already available on the patient profile. And also OTC medications and references.
So the step three is when the standardized patient enters the room, you should be in standing position and you should have a smile on, offer help and offer empathy. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Please have a seat in our counseling area. Whatever we discuss will be confidential. You offer confidentiality, you offer empathy. And when the patient is sitting, you are allowed to sit. After that, when the patient enters the room, you are going to expect one of the seven cases. Either it is pickup case, Hello, can I pick up my medication? I think the question can be started like this. Or it is a refill case. Hello, I'm here to refill my medication. You will do all the assessments regardless, either it is refill or pick up. It can be OTC case. In OTC cases, as mentioned in previous sessions, you might or might not have references. So it is a good idea to have the red flags by heart. You can have healthcare professional case. It can be inter or intraprofessional collaboration. Hi, I am Dr. Chris. One of my patients uh, has UTI and is allergic to penicillin. I would like your recommendation, please. This can be one of the cases. And uh, it can be about expanded scope of practice. Hello, I am out of my medication and my doctor is on vacation. And be really face these problems on a daily basis. In real practice, it, they really happen. I also have flight in a few hours. Can you please give me my Ramipril? I know there is no refill in my profile, blah, blah, blah. So these are the type of conversations that you might hear, or there is demo. Uh, hi, can you teach me how to inject my Ozempic, please? or have to, do, have to do insulin injection or, or have to do my blue puffer, you will be having one of these seven cases. You will have fifth minute buzz. In fifth minute buzz, there are two things that can happen. The actor will come up with a question that will lead you back to the right track. It is like you're you are talking about different things here and there, but the important things and are missing. So the actor will give you some hint with the correct question to lead you back to the correct track. It is very important to concentrate and address these questions. Actually, this question is the answer uh, to that station. So it is important to concentrate what the actor or the standardized patient is asking. Answering to that question might be the only solution to the station, and it can be the change maker question. Or you might have done the case perfectly. There is nothing else left, and the standardized patient will not ask you anything. But anyway, it is a good idea in the middle of the case, and when the case is finished, you make sure by asking, is there anything else that I can help you with? And you will be surprised when you find out the patient has another question. So it is important in the middle of the case and at the end of the case to ask the patient, did I solve the problem? Did I address your concern? Is there anything else that I can do? When you ask these questions, you will prompt the patient to ask more questions and more questions by the patients should be welcomed by us because they are the answers to the case itself. After fifth minute question and fifth minute buzz, there is final buzz that happens in um, seventh minute. It is the final minute and the case is done. But the important thing is even when the case is finished earlier, do not let the standardized patient leave the room because there is no point, there is no advantage in letting the patient leave the room earlier. Even you're 100% sure the case is solved, every concern is addressed, let the patient sit in the room and tell him, tell her, is that okay if I check my reference to make sure that nothing is missing, I, I want to double check the information. And when you're double checking information, you might realize you have missed something or you did not mention something very important. <laughs>